Hi, and welcome to your 14th iOS programming tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to replicate an iOS 7 style parallax effect within your own application. We'll have a background image and six different image views which will be representing icons on an iOS 7 device's home screen layered on top of that. And as we move the device, in this case an iPhone, the background will respond to our movements. We'll be using the UI accelerometer to get data from the accelerometer and then correspondingly move the background image using a scroll view. If you didn't understand any of that, don't worry, it is complex, but I'll be stepping you through it in Xcode in a moment. In case you're not familiar with what this parallax is, I suggest you Google it or on your iOS 7 device if you have iOS 7 installed on your device. On your home screen if you've got a still image as your wallpaper, tilt the device and you'll see that the background moves and responds to your movement to create a sort of 3D effect with the icon stationary on top of it. I'd show you but uh, the parallax does not work on AirPlay so we will make our parallax work on AirPlay though. Anyway, let's get started. So open up Xcode and I'm going to be using Xcode 5, which is Apple's newest Xcode supporting the iOS 7 SDK. I figured it was quite topical to release this iOS 7 parallax tutorial, seeing that iOS 7 was just released. So create a new Xcode project and uh, I'm going to do a single view application and call it Parallax uh, Tutorial. I'll call it Parallax Tutorial. And devices, I'm just going to do iPhone, but you could do iPhone and iPad. It would work on both, because both devices, I'm not sure about the iPad 1, but the iPad 2, 3, and 4, and Mini definitely have accelerometers. So I'm just going to go back to the simulator. Okay, so let's go to our storyboard to begin, because we're going to have a lot to do in the storyboard. And it's not as simple as an image with a few more images on top of it. In fact, we need to have a scroll view with an image view embedded into that. And the reason for this is because um, we need to be able to move the image around and we need the image to be inside a scroll view so that we can move the, sc the image around the scroll view uh, and we can programmatically make the scroll view move. So you'll need to be familiar with this hierarchy area here and if you can't see it, it means that it's closed. So you'll see an arrow down near the bottom left corner and if you click on that arrow, it will expand our object hierarchy. You'll see that there's a view controller and some layout guides and then the view. So this is our view here and inside this view we need to have a scroll view and then some more views. If you're not familiar with this hierarchy what happens is the main object is uh, furthest to the left and then any objects inside that are uh, indented to the right about a tab and then any objects within those objects so if I had an object in my view will be indented again. So let's begin with a scroll view. So in our objects, we need to find a scroll view. It's like a text field, but it's just a scroll view, so there's no text. Pretty much a white square with a scroll wheel. Drag that in, and it will automatically, when this goes anywhere near your view, automatically expand to be full screen. That's fine. Leave it like that. You'll see inside the hierarchy, it's now been indented because it's inside our view. And that's a good thing, and that's what we want. What we now need to do is actually set some dimensions for the scroll view so that it's uh, actually not only filling the screen, but it's a bit outside of the screen. So these dimensions we can find inside our measurement controls. So you'll be in the property and attributes inspector at the moment. Let's go on to the little measuring tape icon in the top right and you'll now see some options. We really particularly need to be looking at this view options. Make sure that inside the square there's two arrows in the top left corner, not in the center. Then we need to set up some width and height properties. For the x-axis we're going to set that to negative 100. And for the y we're also going to do negative 100. Then for our width let's do uh, 676. And for the height I'll make that 886. I found those to those uh, coordinates and sizes to work about right, and you can move the scroll view around a bit so it's a bit more centered. From here, we need to put an image inside of our scroll view, and that image view will then be controlled and will move around. So the image view needs to be of similar dimensions to the UI scroll view. Before we add in our image, we obviously need to import an image into Xcode. 
To do this, there are a few bugs in Xcode 5, meaning that the references aren't created when you're in the storyboard, and it's just a lot simpler to go into your app delegate.m, find your image by either right-clicking on the Parallax Tutorial folder and clicking Add Files, or if you've got your file nearby the window, just click on the file and drag it into the folder. Make sure copy items into destinations group folder is need if needed is selected, and that just means that the image will be duplicated inside our parallax tutorial folder, meaning that if we were to upload this to the app store, the images wouldn't disappear and everyone would have access to them. Then click finish. Then go command B to build our project, which is like saving the document. Then we can go back into our main.storyboard and drag in a UI image view. Click on the image view and drag it inside the scroll view. So to do that, we're going to get the image view and drag it inside the scroll view here. Make sure that the, um, the blue line is slightly indented to the right again, so that it's actually inside of the scroll view, not just another element on the view. As you'll see, an arrow appears next to scroll view because it now has elements inside it. We want the image view to be slightly bigger than the scroll view again, so I'm going to make my width... Uh, approximately 800 and I'll make my height 980 and that should do pretty well I'll again center it a bit more now we can actually start adding some code although first let's add some uh, views inside our main view to represent the app icons on the screen rather than using a colored image view I'm just going to add some more views to do this, we'll add in a view, and then we'll add in on top of the, that new view, some more views. So, find a view, which is this one here in our objects inspector, a grey square with another square inside it, and drag it above the scroll view. Then, click on the scroll view, on our hierarchy view, this is all happening, and click on the arrow next to the scroll view to compress all of the contents. Then drag that above the view. So we've now got a view, and then inside of that view, we have a scroll view and another view. Now we need to make this new view the size of the iPhone screen, so just drag it into the corners. Okay, now we need to set its background to be clear. So once you've got the view selected, the view inside of the view. Uh, in your attributes, so go off the measuring tape and go back to your attributes, Click on background and then you need to select default, which will make a clear color. Then we need to add some views inside of that view, uh, which will act as our colored icons. So again, get another view and drag it inside of this view here. I can just drag it inside on the storyboard rather than in the hierarchy and it will automatically go inside of our second uh, indented view in our hierarchy view. If you don't understand what any of that means, don't worry. All that you should see is a hierarchy view that looks like this, or like this. In our storyboard, I've now got a square, or an approximate square, doesn't have to be exactly square. And I'm also going to add in a few more squares, so I can just go Command C and Command V to copy and paste this square a few times. Uh, there'll be approximately six on the screen, as I can't fit more than that with the icon size that I've selected. Okay, now I'm going to add a color to every second one. So select every second um, box of you, or every third actually, and then change the background color in the attributes to, let's say, a yellow. And then for the remaining ones, I'll make that a red. Now your hierarchy area should look something like this, and your storyboard should look something like this. What we haven't yet done is we need to still add the image to the image view. So click on image view in the hierarchy area, and then for image, type the name of your image. Mine is called background.png. Okay, so we've now created this view. Now we can start adding some code. We'll begin in our .h file, and then we can go into our .m. So go into your .h file by clicking on the little tuxedo icon, selecting automatic, and then selecting viewcontroller.h. After this line UI view controller, we need to type a triangular bracket and then type UI accelerometer delegate and then close those triangular brackets and open a curly bracket and press enter. Inside here we need to set up a UI accelerometer and you'll see that when typing it comes up, UI accelerometer has a red line through it. That just means it's deprecated as of iOS 6 and above, but don't worry, it still works and it won't make a difference for now. 
And then we'll call that accelerometer. And add a semicolon. Then we need some numbers, which will be the numbers which will store the accelerometer data in. And the coordinates for the image and everything. These will be float values because they have decimals. Otherwise, we could use an int. But because they're not necessarily going to be whole numbers, we can't do that. So type float x offset, so x off. And then we'll do the same for y, so y off. And then we'll do velocity, so float x velocity. And float y velocity. And then we also need a value for the acceleration, which will be x excel. And float y excel. Now, underneath our curly bracket, let's add some properties. We need at property and then in brackets non-atomic retain and I'll go through this code in a moment UI accelerometer asterisk accelerometer and then we need another property so let's type app property and then in brackets weak and non-atomic IB outlet UI scroll view and we'll just call it BG scroll view and add a semicolon. Then go Command B to just build it, which pretty much saves it. And then in that dot that appears next to the app property, click on it and drag it to your scroll view. Okay, so we've now hooked up all of our elements and we can start adding the code to make it all work. So let's go into our viewcontroller.m and begin adding some code. I'm going to go back into my single editor. Under the add implementation line, we need to synthesize our accelerometer. So type at synthesize accelerometer and then add a semicolon. Now inside our view did load, we need to add some more code. So let's go in view did load and type underscore bg scroll view dot content size equals CG size make and then we need the first one the one with a width and a height and type underscore again BG scroll view dot frame dot size dot width plus 30 and we can fiddle around with these numbers after to get it working even better then for the uh, height for the um, height sorry yeah we just do the same code. So frame dot size dot width plus 30. I'll explain why in a moment. Then add a closing bracket and a semicolon. Now we need to type self dot accelerometer equals square bracket UI accelerometer shared accelerometer close square brackets and then self dot accelerometer dot update interval equals 0 0.03 and then add a semicolon once again then type self dot accelerometer dot delegate and ah uh, sorry dot delegate and that will be equal to self because if we go back to our dot h file you'll remember that we set it to be a ui accelerometer delegate the view controller a subclass of ui accelerometer now we need to create an NS timer which will be regularly checking whether the accelerometers moved or changed and if so where to move the parallax or the background to to create the parallax. So square brackets NS timer scheduled timer with interval and it's that second one with target and selector and user info. And then for the time interval well, let's do negative one and I'll explain why in a moment. For target I'm just going to type self and for selector type at selector and then inside selector we'll just call it tick then inside user info type nil and repeat yes then add a semicolon we'll need to set up our tick method in a moment now we need to check if the accelerometer is moved or accelerated so type dash and then in brackets void accelerometer and then the one that's crossed out there's only one that comes up and then we need to get the acceleration of it. So type float xx 
equals negative acceleration dot x. Ah, uh, yep, dot x, semicolon. And then float y, y equals, and then this one's in brackets, in brackets, acceleration dot y plus 0 0.5, and then we need to type f because that's a float, it's got decimals. And then let's multiply that by 2. And again, it's 2.0 float because we're multiplying a float by a float. We can't multiply it by an integer. And now we need to check what the direction is. So type float, Excel direction, or we'll just do directs, and then semicolon, and then if x velocity, and that's being created uh, in our .h file, remember, times one point times negative, sorry, 1.0 f is more than zero then inside our statements we can do excel direction to be equal to 1.0 and then we need to do else excel excel direction to be equal to negative 1.0 so that's settled the uh, direction and whether it's changed now we need a new direction so float new direction and again I'm using the shorthand and then if xx is more than zero then we want the new direction to be equal to 1.0 and then if it otherwise we want new direction to be equal to negative 1.0 so then we can close that, uh, we need to add a semicolon of course, and then we can close that curly bracket. And now we need the acceleration direction on the y-axis. So type float, and then excel direction on the y-axis, so excel di uh, y. And that came out sounding violent, but it's not. And then we want if y velocity uh, times 1.0f and everything so we can just copy this code obviously and it's all exactly the same except it's y so let's copy that and we'll delete all of this if statement and now we just need to change this to yy and then we need to change um sorry I've got this wrong down here we need to change it to y velocity excel direction on the y Excel direction on the Y, uh, new direction on the Y, and then Y, Y, new direction Y, and new direction Y. Underneath that, we need to go if Excel direction X equals uh, new direction X, uh, then we want X offset, so we can get rid of the curly brackets because it's only one line. So x offset to equal acceleration acceleration dot x times thirty. Then we can do another if statement. So if and again get rid of the curly brackets. We only need the condition. Uh, if the acceleration direction on the y equals the new direction on the y, then the y offset should equal acceleration dot y times 30 and add a semicolon and then we still need to create this tick method that we have used in the um, NS timer let's quickly check what our error is here and it, uh, the issues I've only used one um, equal sign so now underneath our accelerometer type void tick because that's what we've been using with our NS timer and every one second we need to do uh, underscore bg scroll view. So we're going to move the scroll view. Dot content offset equals cg point make. And it's the first one with a uh, cg float x and cg float y. And then we've just got our x offset and our y offset. And then close the brackets and add a semicolon. So that's all the code we need. Now, you will need an actual device to run this application on, as you cannot test the accelerometer in the simulator. So, I've got a device, and I'll just bring that up in a moment. I'll just run it on my phone in Xcode. 
and uh, I don't have a code signing ID, so let me quickly fix that up. So let me just bring up my iPhone on the screen, and you'll be able to see what happens as I tilt my phone. As you can see, I'll open the application, and as I tilt my device, the background responds to my movements, creating a parallax effect, and it's actually really responsive to how I move my device. Now, you probably can't see it, not only because my screen recording software is probably not fast enough to capture the frame rate needed, but also because on AirPlay the uh, accelerometer doesn't work as well as it should. Obviously, I can change all of this and how responsive it is, and I'll show you some different ways of experimenting. You can change the time interval to something like 0.01 for it to be ridiculously fast and responsive, although then it might be a bit jittery, so if you slowed it down to something like only every one second, then it would look really bumpy because it would sort of go move a bit, wait a second, then move a bit more. So you've sort of got to get that balance. Negative 1 just means infinity in uh, programming, pretty much, and in Objective-C. It just confuses the compiler, and it works really well for this purpose. You can change all these numbers until you find something that works really well. And even I'm still trying to get it perfect, and so it looks even more realistic. And even if you look at iOS 7's background, it's still not as natural as it could be. So I hope you found this tutorial interesting, and if you've got any other iOS programming tutorials that you'd like to see, or see how to replicate any other iOS 7 features like blurred backgrounds or the new, uh, new gestures and everything like that. Just message us directly through YouTube or visit our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash 99 cents app development or our website, 99 cents app development.com and get in touch with us. All the links are in the description. If you like any more info, again, get in touch with us or comment on this video. And be sure to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this and you want to see more. Thanks for watching.